Hello and welcome to this video. Today we are going to learn about building and exporting in Gaia 1.3. I have created a basic terrain here so that we can test our build settings. To start with, we have three ways of building anything. So the first way is we right click and choose mark for export or use the hot key F3 for it. Another way is to use a output node. This is used when we want our height map or color to export in different place in our local drive. So with output we can choose where our final file will be saved or what format will it be saved. These are the same settings that we can choose right here. And third method is to use a mesher node. So mesher will output this terrain as a mesh. Uh, we can choose what format, what scale and uh, how many vertex we want for the mesh. As we change the settings here, it will update the properties here. Now coming to build manager. This here is our build manager. At the top we have all of the nodes that are going to output in all of our graphs. These are arranged such that we can see different graphs and all of its outputs. So since we only have one graph, we are seeing all of the nodes that are within that graph. For each of them, we can choose which file format we want to save it in. And we can change how many of its output we want to export. Since wizard has four outputs, uh, here we can see all of its output. We can choose to uh, mark none and select any one uh, in our case, which is output. And since the output node and measure node have their own properties, uh, we don't get these properties here. We can use this button to change all of the file format of all of our outputs. So if you have multiple outputs, we can change all of them together with this. Next, we come to the definition part. So we have three methods of building in Gaia. With normal build, all of our train will be built as a single piece and exported as a single output. With split, our train will still be built as one, but we can choose number of tiles that it will be split into. Normal and split are the same. The only difference is that in split, after building our height map, it will be divided into the number of tiles that we choose. Here we can choose the resolution of our final outputs. Tile build will build each of the tiles separately and blend them together in any number of tiles that we choose from here. We can choose the blending amount which 25% is more than enough for all of our needs. If you still get any artifact you can bump it up to 50%. Now let's go back to normal build. Color space is what color space our final output would be. So with mutation we will get all those different terrains. and. For each terrain, the tour file will be saved in the build folder. So if there is any terrain that we like, we already have the tour file. Mutation is only available in professional and enterprise license. Next comes our range. So the range will determine that uh, how the data is distributed to our pixels. Before coming to range, let's talk about terrain definitions. The height will be the maximum height that our terrain can go to. It doesn't mean that uh, it has to go that high and the scale would be how wide our train square is so if we change the scale we can see that the, our, our train is changing but the square is still the same it just looks like that it is still 73 kilometers by 73 kilometers and since this is non-destructive we can change our scale and height at any point let me reset that you can adjust your scales to your needs and we don't need to change height that much because 2600 meter is pretty high for what we need. For artists, you can maybe use the full range or maybe go higher. And for the game developers, 2600 meter is a lot. For reference, in games such as GTA 5 and Skyrim, the highest point is around 800 meters. And for Fallout 4, the highest is 1500 meters. So we don't need to go that high with our games then there are two more details at the bottom first is the real scale and second is our height scale ratio so height scale ratio is basically just uh, height upon scale from the terrain definitions now we can use this to scale our terrain externally if we need to and the real scale is how much data in each pixel is so 2.441 means that in each pixel there is uh, 2.4 meters Real scale is calculated by dividing the scale to our resolutions. So if our resolution is 
4096 which is about 5000 meter then our real scale should be 1 so if we change the scale and back now we can see that 1.221 which is pretty close to 1 you can go um, you can change it to 4096 to be precise that would be 1 meter per pixel now let's come to range so in range we have these four options so the first is row which means that the total range uh, in our terrain definition is used so if our terrain is not uh, 2600 meter high then the in our height map there will be no bright pixels so row means it will use our total height for our final build now that would be fine for artists or for terrain where we do not need close-up shots the normalized so what normalized will do is let's say in this terrain that we are building the sea level is at 0 meter and the highest point is at 300 meter so in our height map the brightest pixel will denote the 300 meter point this is especially useful for video games and landscapes where we would need close-up shots the remap is same as the uh, normalized except we can use a min max value and we can go even negative with our minimum value proportional it's not much useful for height maps it's useful more for mesh so with proportional what it will do is it will take the zero point and our top point and it will scale it to match the total height then we have baked cache which will use the cache that we already built for our final export so if you want to reduce the final build time you can bake your nodes in the meantime and then use that baked data to build your final output then we have our build destination this is where our file will be built and what format will be used for our file we can we can use all different kinds of format for our file or we can click this button and manually choose a location in our drive and then we have a bunch of different settings here which do not affect our build directly and then finally click start build to build all of our data so let's say you're building your train at a higher resolution say 4k or say 8k and you have some artifacts but in Gaia you do not see any artifact in your terrain that is because some of the since Gaia is procedural it will try to maintain the same shape overall on the, all of the resolutions but some of the nodes the final look may change slightly so in the meantime when you are building the train it's a good idea to go into 2k and check how things are looking but still some of the details might change at higher resolutions there is always that chance and if you want to pinpoint which node is creating that artifact so you can put multiple outputs in your graph and see where it is happening now that's how we will build anything in Gaia the next question comes that uh, how do we make our landscape in our 3d application or the game engine look exactly like the one in Gaia so for that we would need to know little bit more about scale height and how to scale our train back in our software so for that we will discuss in a separate video where I will show you some examples of scaling in 3d applications and we will take blender and unreal engine for example but all of those techniques will be the same for all of the other 3d softwares and game engines thank you for watching and i'll see you in the next video